So I just woke up and oh my god, this view outside my window is just so amazing. Oh, wow. That's right outside my window. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm still here just staring at the mountain. It's so glorious and incredible. I can't believe I can just go right out and it's right there. <sighs> I was bawling my eyes off and FaceTiming James and my sister just so they could see it too. <sighs> this is just so, so crazy. It's chilly. Oh, man. This view. I don't want to leave it. <laughs> what if I go and then the clouds roll in? I really don't want to leave this view, but I'm heading up to a temple in a pagoda that's supposed to have a really pretty view of Mount Fuji as well. But God, I really feel like I don't need to go anywhere because it's right there. You know, when I booked this Airbnb, it says beautiful view of Mount Fuji. I was picturing like, yeah, you probably get like a tiny view of it, <laughs> but not this. So it really took me off guard how magnificent this view is today. All right, I'm heading out. This is my apartment. And it's down four flights of stairs. <laughs> it was kind of crazy lugging up all the luggages. It wasn't too bad. I just take my time. And that is the train station. And Mount Fuji. It's so crazy. I still can't get over that I'm this close. This train is so spacious and different. There's like a Thomas the railway train. I am going to this pagoda for this view. It's just so incredible to see it this close. You can see why it inspires so many artists to paint it like Hokusai, which I love and I can't believe I'm seeing it like this here. I'm so excited that there's still cherry blossom here. I think they say there are 400 steps up. <laughs> I'm gonna get walking. So many beautiful views. Getting higher and higher. Whew, that's a lot of steps. I think I still have a bit more to go. Magnificent Mount Fuji, the subject of so much art and poetry. We made it to the pagoda. There's a little bit more of a walk up. This is the view here that everybody wants to see and kind of replicate in their photos. I'm going to try my best to get something a little bit different. I think the view is going to be blocked pretty soon. There's a lot of clouds rolling in. Just sitting here, chilling with Mount Fuji. <laughs> oh, is this even real? This feels like a dream. So happy. <laughs> I'm so surprised that the Sakura here are only starting to bloom. Well, they're a lot later. I'm gonna head down to the lake. That is one crazy warning sign. Wild boar and that monkey does not look friendly. Outside of every temple there's usually like a fountain. This one's really pretty. You know, where you cleanse your hands. It's kind of like a purity thing, I think. Oh my goodness, I want to ride on that cute Mount Fuji train. taking a little break to eat the breakfast I haven't eaten yet. I love these. Um, this one's actually labeled in English. The tuna mayo is one of my favorites. Oh, there's a really cool way to open it. Oh, I don't know if I could do it with one hand, but I'll try. So there's this thing. Then you pull it. Pull it down the center. After you pull the middle thing out, you lift this out. And then the other side out as well. And it keeps the seaweed nice and fresh because it's 
two separate layers in there. And you have an onigiri with fresh seaweed that's not doggy. I just walked about 10 minutes from my Airbnb and I'm at the lake, Lake Kawaguchiko. And there's this beautiful cherry blossom tree here. I was told that it's a lot colder here. That's why the cherry blossom uh, peak is like a week or two after Kyoto's. It's nice to see cherry trees again. There's a gem museum here. I wonder if it's worth it. I wonder if I could take a peek first. <laughs> Cause it's gorgeous out and I'd rather spend the time outside. Yeah, it was really small in there. So I don't think I'm gonna check out the little exhibit of different gems. Maybe if it was like not nice out, but it's so nice out today. So I'm gonna take a walk instead. It's so peaceful and there's like a nice breeze going. That's so nice. And there's Mount Fuji covered with clouds again. <laughs> really have to wake up early to see it. Crossing this bridge so I can get to the other side of the lake for a different view. This is the other side of the lake. Mount Fuji still have its head in the clouds. It's just so beautiful. Mount Fuji just made an appearance. The clouds have been out of it. The crowd is just going crazy. That's a fight for a spot here. It'll be interesting to see what kind of pictures everyone gets though because everybody has a different point of view and a different perspective of what they want to take but yeah there's some crazy gear out here I love the manhole covers in Japan they're so pretty this one is of course because I'm in Mount Fuji I'm at this restaurant that specializes in a noodle soup called Koto and it is a miso based broth and the noodle kind of looks like udon but it's prepared like dumpling so it's more tender it's usually with just vegetable and served in a very big cast iron pot you eat it with this gigantic spoon I love the texture of the handmade noodles and there's like regional veggies pumpkin, like tofu skin mushrooms it's so good so hearty oh i am so tired i was up at five today so it's now six o'clock it's been a long day but i don't mind being home early today because why because that is in my <laughs> backyard oh my goodness i still can't believe it mount fuji's been really good today it's out most of the day. I just can't believe it's right there. <laughs> it looks so small on video, but it's gigantic. Ugh. Thanks for staying out most of the day today. I feel like in real life it really looks like this. So large. <sighs> just gonna spend the next hour or so sitting here enjoying my view because this is too amazing. Well, they did something to the soil because yesterday those things weren't there. I bought this drink from the convenience shop or actually from the souvenir shop. Fujiyama cider, sweet soda or something, but it's advertised heavily so I have to try it. Let's try it. It kind of tastes like bubble gum. <laughs> kind of sweet and it just makes me think of like a very light bubblegum flavor. I also stopped by Lawson and grabbed this since I already have that huge bowl of noodles for lunch slash dinner. This is rose hips and raspberry and I love that they're so thoughtful. They would always give you like a spoon or a napkin or a pair of chopsticks depending on what you buy. So cool ice cream in front of this life doesn't get better than that right now the ice cream is so yummy it definitely has that pure maize isfahan taste the rose raspberry taste it's missing that lychee component but it's really good and 
and um, there's like a raspberry swirl in there. I don't know if you can see it, but the sun is setting, so there's like a slight pink glow on the right side of Fuji right now. I don't want it to get dark yet because this is so nice and I'm just sitting here taking it all in. I gotta go repack my luggage because I bought a ton more food souvenirs to bring home. This is some custard cake that won first prize for best souvenir here or something. Apple Kit Kats. These cookies are made here at Kawaguchiko. They're so cute. They're in the shape of no Fuji with the snow cap. <laughs> I actually bought like a small box and tasted it first and it tastes good so I went back to buy more. Because you never know, sometimes you buy these things and it end up not tasting so good. And these are more Mount Fuji shaped cookies. The packaging is just so cute. So these are for some of my very special peeps. I can't wait to give it to them when I get back. I'm leaving for Tokyo today, so I'm just gonna enjoy this view until it's time to check out and head to the train station. It's an incredible feeling waking up and just looking outside the window and Mount Fuji's right there. This is not something I'll forget anytime soon. Look, he's planting all the little plants. Wow, there's a lot. I'm getting ready to leave. I don't want to leave this apartment. It's so nice. It's homey and comfortable and how can you beat that view? I mean, come on. Oh, waking up to that every day. So nice. Oh, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> but actually this is not the last time I'm gonna see Mount Fuji because I booked a tour that's gonna happen in I think seven or eight days. I booked it because it's a special festival that doesn't happen until the end of the month. So I'm going on a tour there back to this area and there's supposed to be like this crazy pink moss flowers that grows at the base of Mount Fuji. And um, there's gonna be a strawberry picking and some ice caves, so that'll be exciting. So I'm not too sad that I'm leaving Mount Fuji today. Um, I'm heading to Tokyo and I'm staying a full 10 days there which is crazy because every time we go to Tokyo we only stay there for like three days or so so this time I'll really have time to like explore and walk around I'm going to my eighth and final <laughs> lodging which is crazy it's been pretty tiring moving from uh, different areas but it's fine I think it's tiring because I buy too many souvenirs <laughs> and my luggage so I dread it every time I have to move. It also means that I'm getting home to my family soon and I miss them so much. We FaceTime today and I got to show them the view of Mount Fuji which is so cool. I can't wait to bring them back here. They definitely made me cry because they know I'm a crybaby and <laughs> Oh, this adventure has been so incredible. There's still a good 10 days left, so I'm excited still. <laughs> All right, I need to get going. See you guys in Tokyo. Bye. I just got this drink from the vending machine and it's hot. So nice. Just got to my last Airbnb of the trip, my eighth vlogging. <laughs> And it was really easy to find in a very convenient location so even with all my luggage luggages it wasn't overwhelming at all and I know I'll be okay making it back to the airport because it's on near one of the major lines to get to the airport so all my souvenirs buying will be okay it'll be a little heavy but I'll make it and will make a lot of people happy once I get home so let's check this place out I haven't even seen it yet so let's see Front door, going in, I think there's some like closets. There's a washing machine. Alright. Oh cute. A little kitchenette. And the bedroom. Wow. It's really cute. Oh. Ooh. This is 
looking really cute. I love Airbnbs because you kind of get a taste of what it's like to live in the city that you're visiting. The only drawback I find is if you are looking to, the only drawback is if, whoa, that's a cool view. Wow. Huh. Sorry, I was saying that the only drawback is if you want to check in early or check in late, it's a little bit more difficult because most of the time you can't. Wow, I'm loving this. This is so nice. I'm going to enjoy this for the next 10 days. Oh, and then there's a welcome Kit Kat. Green tea, of course. This is awesome. All right, I'm gonna freshen up a little bit and head out to grab some food and hang out. And I love that in Shibuya, they call the famous process scramble crossing. <laughs> scramble crossing. I don't even know where I'm going. Gosh, I feel like I'm in shock after coming from the relaxed peaceful serene Mount Fuji to here it's like so many people and craziness there's so much happening and people are on the go so uh, I'm checking out this building called Shibuya Hikari it's shops and restaurants I'm gonna find something to eat this place was recommended by Hello Sandwich in her book Hello Tokyo she's a crafter who lives in Tokyo and I love her Instagram feed and on the 11th floor in this building there's a free sky deck could see this incredible view. There's like little ants. Oh, you can see the crossing on the top left hand corner. So many people. I came across this art gallery while I was waiting for a place to open for dinner. All of the art in here were inspired by a popular Japanese novel. I love this artist. She made her art into stamps and we were able to pick out and stamp our favorites onto a piece of paper to keep. I think it's a way to connect and we get to make our own story out of it too. I'm not sure if this is true but it was my take on it. So that was really cool. Um, no one really spoke that much English but you know just simple words and stuff we kind of get the gist of stuff. Um, but sometimes you just don't need to speak the same language to connect. Yeah, that really made my day. I got a little collection of stamps <laughs> and she was really sweet. That was really fun. This is my dinner and this restaurant honors the food of different regions of Japan. This is a seasonal salad. It's is my favorite. And that's a grilled fried tofu. And that's my view. In this crazy store that seems to have everything it's called Don something and it's pretty popular but geez it's, it's loud and it's kind of crazy and I don't know where anything is stuffs are just exploded everywhere this place really has everything it has costumes and socks bras and lingerie <laughs> lots of green tea Kit Kats from request back home Oh my goodness, I've always wanted the Kurilakuma little pajama thing. <laughs> I'm gonna have a hard time finding space in my luggage. The morning rush hour in Tokyo. It's crazy, the sea of suits. Love this cute little soy sauce bottle. Today is the last day for me to use my Japan Rail Pass. So I headed to Nikko, which is about two hours north of Tokyo. I love that the vending machine has a ninja to show you how to use it. <laughs> it is so cold today. I think it's only like 40 degrees. The temperature ranges so much. It's been anywhere from 30 degrees to 70 degrees. So I'm quite sleepy today too, so it's not helping. But um, there's a lot of shrines here, and I'm heading to the most famous one. Someone's raining on me. 
little pine leaves or something. <laughs> All right, I'll show you the walk to the shrine. Wow, look at this pagoda. It is very different from all the other ones I've seen. It is very ornate and pretty. So it says for the ticket, you see the whole area, including sleeping cat and inner shrine. I want to find out what the sleeping cat is. <laughs> it is very cool in here. All of these shrines are so lavishly decorated. Usually shrines in Japan are so simple. So I wonder why I need to read up on it. It's too bad that the center gate, which is one of the main attractions, is under construction. But all the side buildings and everything is still so gorgeous. There's a turtle among all the rocks. It's amazing that all of these beautiful, ornate buildings and shrines are nestled in the middle of the forest. I can't even imagine the amount of work it takes to maintain this shrine. And that's the center gate that's being renovated as we speak. Sleep cat. I must find out. So you can see the restoration work that they're doing for the gate. Crazy that they have to repaint all of those details, but it looks incredible. It is beautiful. I really love the white with the gold and the little statues. Is that the sleeping cat? People were taking photos, but I don't know. I just feel like I'm transported to a different time and a different world. I'm not sure where this path leads to, but maybe the sleeping cat? <laughs> I wonder if it was that cat at that gate, but <laughs> I'm not sure, but it's gorgeous. Just in the middle of the forest. That was a lot of steps up. <sighs> Let's go see what's up here. More signs of a sleeping cat. What is the sleeping cat? <sighs> Can somebody tell me? I think I found my answer. Sleeping cat national treasure. And it was the cat at the gate. But I want to know more about the story. Why is this cat a national treasure? Man, this location is just so cool. I really do love that it's in the middle of the forest. It's like a Miyazaki film. So this is the final resting place of the Tokugawa Shogun him and his family ruled Japan during the Edo period for over 250 years so that's why it's so important I just looked that up no wonder it's so serene and it takes many steps to come up here yeah so I looked online and it said that the sleeping cat is very important because he was sculpted by a very famous sculptor who spent months and months studying cats to sculpt them realistically as possible. And he's famous because he's so peaceful in his sleep and it indicates like the peaceful era of the Tokugawa family ruling Japan. And also, one of his paw is very tense, meaning that even though he's peaceful, he could leap into defense whenever there's any threat against the family. So there are a lot of explanation, but mostly people think it's because it's a cute sleeping cat. <laughs> I 
I just went in there and there were no photography around inside, but it's so beautiful and intricate. And I'm obsessed with the white and the gold. I've just never seen a shrine made in that color combination. Another place nearby and the walkway there. It's so magical. I think this is a love shrine because there is hearts motif everywhere. More hearts. I'm going to pick my fortune. And it's an honor system. Take a fortune and you just put in the yen that corresponds to it. Uh, I think this is the only one in English, so here it goes. The fortune you receive, whether good or bad, is a message from the Shinto and Buddhist deity in response to sincere prayer. Alright, let's see what I got. And I got a good fortune, which is great. <laughs> As when scattering seeds and planting saplings, the passing of each day and hard efforts bear fruit. It is good to take up something new. That's interesting because that's what this whole trip is about. So. If you are never idle, the protection of the divine will bring good fortune. I would like to point out that it says travel favorable. And so it is. <laughs> and there lies my fortune. What's fun? These Kokeshi dolls are very different. I like them. But they're also a block of wood, so they're really heavy. <laughs> I try to find ones that I like. I have a small collection at home. This one's really cool. But it's $330. It's big. I am really loving these little ones. I'm looking forward to the soup. Yuba Udon lunch set. Look at all the layers in the Yuba roll. Oh, this is so good. It's so comforting. So I just walked like five minutes downhill and everyone's talking about this bridge and I got here and I said that's it <laughs> uh, the walk uphill is gonna be hard because I'm so tired now I'm trekking back uphill the bridge was uneventful <laughs> I'm just hanging out at the character street in Tokyo station for a little bit before I head home and call it a day there are a ton of these capsule toys and I think I want this one. It's gonna be my first capsule toy. Which one I got. <laughs> That's my first capsule toy. It's so cute. I think I want another one. There's a new Kit Kat flavor. It's called I Love Tea and there's five different kinds. Oh my goodness, Tokyo Banana updated the look of their strawberry cake. It's so cute. I might have gone overboard with my first capsule toy experience in Japan, but it's because these guys are so cute. <laughs> I had to get them all. And that's how they get you. So they were 200 yen each, so about two bucks. And I only spent an extra 10 bucks just to get all of them in the collection, which I don't think is so bad. And now I have extras to give away. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they just make me happy. They're so cute. Look at this guy. This one was like the one that's hard to get. He's sitting in an avocado. And I love that. His little butt's always exposed. <laughs> oh man, they're so funny. And that one, he's just done with life. So lazy, so unmotivated. <laughs> this character is just so relatable. I think that's why people love him so much. And I also bought a plushie. I love that he's using the egg white as his blanket. All right, I'm gonna try to work on my video. Good night, my little guy. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to see more videos. I'll see you next time. Bye!